Blanca. I live here in La Paz and I take care of the clients about customer services. And this is my friend, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ian, I'm Canadian. I came to La Paz just over two years ago and almost immediately decided I was going to stay. <laughs> and I'm uh, a real, real estate agent. I'm born here. I was out of the, uh, La Paz for a few years because I went to study my first degree. And I lived one year in the UK and one year in the United States learning English. And when I finished the university, I came back because my family is from here. And I really am in love with La Paz all the time. La Paz has been growing. It's very different from when I was a kid and has been getting better each time. My parents lived in, have lived in La Paz for over a decade. And so just over two years ago, right at the start of COVID, um, uh, my industry kind of shut down. I was running a program for 28 cruise ships out of South Beach, Miami, and that industry just kind of pew, disappeared. Um, and so I thought, I'll pack up the car, I'll drive to La Paz, make sure my parents are okay. And uh, I wasn't here for very long before I decided that I, I just wanted to stay and I wasn't going to go back to that life. It's a city that feels like a village. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's so friendly. And yeah, you were mentioning, we have one of the most beautiful Malacons that I've ever seen are boardwalks along the ocean downtown. And in many other cities, it's, it's, it's more like a fashion show to go to the yes. Malacon. Here, or, uh -huh. you'll see four generations in a single family every evening walking and enjoying their company. So there's a, there's a, a, a gentleness about La Paz culture that is v very, very attractive. We are in Centenario. And where is Centenario? Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the areas almost out of La Paz and has been a neighborhood that has been growing mm -hmm. in the last few years a lot. Uh, but you're still like 10 minutes from Walmart and 20 minutes from the Malacan and downtown and really the heart of La Paz. So it is uh, an area that has become increasingly more desirable with expats uh, who are investing in this area because you get a little bit more bang for your buck. You get a little bit more land, you can get a little bit bigger house. And um, for people that live out here, um, it really is paradise in La Paz. Not a lot of traffic, not a lot of noise, great vistas, great views, great food, great spots to visit. Um, and, uh, you know, when you live in a desert environment, that little breeze that comes through El Centenario and the hills makes a huge difference to your enjoyment of, of every single day as well. It's lovely here. In this neighborhood, you, there aren't a lot of condo buildings, so the majority of the listings are going to be homes. So if you're looking at a two-bedroom, two-bathroom, nice home without a pool, <coughs> um, but it'll probably have a rooftop deck with a beautiful view of the bay, uh, there were some wonderful builders and architects in this neighborhood, so there's a, a wonderful aesthetic with a lot of the homes in El Centenario that have uh, that are very expat friendly and that you have a big kitchen, you have a lot of windows, you have a lot of light, you have a lot of storage, but the homes still have a really charming traditional Mexican facade to them. So it's sort of the best of both worlds. That kind of listing, you're probably looking in the neighborhood of high 200s, 250, 260, 270. Um, however, there are exceptions. Uh, I just sold a, an absolutely beautiful home in a little community called Vista Colinas uh, for 208,000. Two years ago, it was the majority were retirees. Um, now I have clients that are in their 30s. I have clients that are in their 40s. It's a, it's a much more diverse range of people coming to La Paz right now. A digital nomad lifestyle that became very, very uh, popular during COVID, uh, we're seeing a large contingent as well. Um, and on that note, if you're watching this and you're a digital nomad, yes, El Centenario has, uh, for the most part, has all fiber optic internet as well. So I have clients who have an 11-year-old. They're from Washington State. Uh, they came down. Rory is going to a great school in La Paz now uh, that's mostly bilingual. Uh, she's learning Spanish very quickly. And yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful family-oriented community, but I wouldn't say that that's limited to just El Centenario. La Paz in general is very welcoming to families. There's a, um, you know, for a city like La Paz, there are so many playgrounds and jungle gyms and areas for people to play. The Malacan is excellent. There's a beach, 
just down here in in, uh, in the Bay of La Paz, just just in El Centenario, where you'll see children and families all the time. And that really, for someone who is considering a relocation to Mexico for the first time, for, perhaps, La Paz is very safe. So uh, the, when you say about safety, that's something that it's particular from La Paz. We're still a town that is really safe. So it's not that you leave the doors open like before, but but it's not like you'll be afraid to be uh, attacked or something like some other place no, in, I, I, in the world. It's a really safe city. People from the states that I know, from, from the USA that I know, uh, I got asked a million times, you're moving to Mexico, are you crazy? Do you feel safe? And I always say this, and this might be controversial if you're watching from Florida, <laughs> but uh, I always say, listen, I could be anywhere in La Paz or El Centenario at three o'clock in the morning by myself, wandering, waiting for an Uber, just taking a walk, and I would feel safer than walking a block across the parking lot in Miami to the Shell Station across the street. There's no question. It's a very safe. Yeah. There's almost no violent crime in La Paz. Uh, petty theft went up a little bit in COVID, but I think that was true for everywhere in the world. Yeah. We are a little bit uh, closer to the United States. So for that reason, I think that it's kind of like easy. So it's not like, like you will see the big difference, big difference whenever that you're comparing to the main line. We have maybe American, a little bit of American traditions. Actually, a lot of people here speak English or at least understand. And some places in the main line, you don't have anybody that speaks English. I'll say two things. Uh, the Baja is such a traditional place for Americans to visit, especially from the west coast mm -hmm. of the United States and Canada. Um, so there is a, a comfort within the local community with expats coming here that makes things easy. From a logistical standpoint, transitioning here is easy because there's people like Blanca that know how all of the systems of, of relocation work and can help you with immigration, with utilities, with uh, driver's licenses, with everything. Um, I, 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 I may be an expert in real estate here, but every time someone has one of those logistical questions, I refer them to Blanca. <laughs> Renting long term, it really takes some looking. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important. To, I mean, the best route to getting that done is for someone to reach out to a realtor because they are going to know what's available and what isn't available. Uh, we deal with rentals all the time. Our brokerage doesn't do a lot of rentals, but we have to know what's available and what's out there because we have so many clients coming down to stay for a period of time, whether they're building a home that we've helped them buy. Uh, and, and, you know, giving them the contact to good builders so that they can build the home of their dreams and they want to live here and supervise that. We have to find rentals for them. We have to find rentals for people that are going to stay for several weeks or a month uh, during their home search. So it's important to reach out to a realtor because uh, they're going to have the inside track on what's available. Um, because there isn't a huge amount available in El Centenario. That, that will change. Increasingly, we have clients down here that their goal is to be part-time um, in Mexico. And so, uh, you know, there, there's always new opportunities happening for renters. The over, the, the, the 30,000 foot view of La Paz from an expat's perspective is that people are extraordinarily hospitable and welcoming and friendly here. There's a lot of places you could relocate to that are more tourist driven. Um, that you may be thought of as an opportunity to make money by the locals if you're an expat. The assumption is that you're wealthy and that maybe you have something you can gift me or give me or services that you'll pay for. But in La Paz, you almost immediately feel like a local when you live here. People are incredibly hospitable. Now, I'll qualify that for a second and say that if you my biggest advice is if you want to move to Mexico expect that there will be cultural differences expect that there'll be bureaucratic differences and understand that when you move to Mexico you want to live in Mexico so don't be looking for a community that's like a suburb of San Diego that's somehow across the border in Baja so there is differences there are differences that I personally find incredibly charming and I love I don't want to go to, you know, there used to be an Applebee's restaurant in La Paz. I would never have gone to Applebee's in La Paz uh, because I don't have a need for that familiarity. Not when 
you cannot trip in this town without getting a delicious meal. Uh, whether that meal is only costs you 80 pesos or 110 pesos, doesn't matter, it's gonna be great. Yeah. And so, thirsting for the familiarity of the United States or Canada is going to happen occasionally, but if you embrace Mexico, when you move to Mexico, you're going to be more fulfilled and more happy. And, um, and like me, you'll never want to leave. Talking about La Paz, we have great hospitals, right. big pharmacies also. Uh, we have an airport that is important to say, direct flights. <laughs> uh, so you have, like, you say, the, like Ian said, the big stores. I think the only one is missing is Costco. There's great movie theaters. The, the, and speaking of the healthcare, the, the La Paz has the best healthcare in Baja Sur. Uh, yes, there's no question about it. There's yes, multiple we hospitals. The, we have the two big hospitals in La Paz because La Paz uh, is the capital of the state, what is very important. So we have the general hospital and AIMS, the big ones in the state, plus the private hospitals also we have, like yeah. Medical Center and Philippas. Yeah, it's not difficult to, <clears throat> on occasion, of course, you'll find someone that maybe doesn't speak good English, um, but uh, the majority will. And I would say that in that situation, you know, you're, as an expat, you're a guest in Mexico, and the, the, the language in Mexico is Spanish. So, um, Take an interpreter with you. That's your responsibility. Because the medical care, from personal experience, is excellent. Um, I've never had an issue. And, you know, once you're a resident here, you have choices as well. There's health plans that are very inexpensive, and it's going to be extraordinarily inexpensive to what people are used to in the United States. And in Canada, who have great health care, but sometimes you have to wait a long time for those kind of services. Here, you have your choice. Wait a little bit, or just go or pay just a couple go. of dollars and get it done. Yeah, but it will be never the same price as in the U.S. or No, Canada. it's so inexpensive. The transportation, public transportation, is not so good here. So it's more common right now the Uber or Didi. Uh, but yes, yeah, better to have a car here. <laughs> well, the used car market went up in La Paz just like yes. it did everywhere else over COVID. All the world. Um, but is it difficult? No, it's a process, just like it's a process when you buy a car in Canada or the United States. Um, Blanca helped me, yes. <laughs> so uh, it was it, very easy for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on the, it's the same like any place. You have to find the car that you want, and uh, whenever that you find it, it's really easy to do the process. I help my clients with all that process. So. If you're American, you don't have to be a resident because there are a lot of American plated cars down here mm -hmm. that you can buy. Um, many people that move down to uh, La Paz from the United States will register their cars in South Dakota because they never have to take them back to do a smog check. And so the car can stay here indefinitely. Now if you're an American buying another American's car, yeah, that's very here. easy. And that can happen, and they're they're readily available as well. Yes, all the thing is that you need to have all the time your driver license from the U.S. or Canada uh, active. Yeah. Never get expired because that's when you get in trouble. <laughs> right. But for Mexican uh, cars or Mexican plates, you need to ha be resident. Uh -huh. So here, all the baja. Uh, we are a little bit like I said before, separate from the midline. And this is a state that we were uh, taking more the fishing activity, uh, and we are related more about that. Blanca mentioned that the culture of this part of Baja is a lot about the ocean, and, and but it's not just fishing. One of the things that I found really surprising is there are two great marine biology universities mm -hmm. here in La Paz. And so the respect for the ocean, the opportunity to go on a tour with a marine biologist to see whale sharks, to see turtles, to see sharks, to see orcas in the water, to snorkel with sea lions at Espiritu Santo, that's amazing. The other thing that makes the culture here special for me is there is, and I've been to many places in Mexico, is that there's a, there's a, there's a shyness. There's a, the, the culture here is humble and unassuming and with that comes a sense of empathy and a sense of kindness that you don't see everywhere. To be in an environment with this kind of welcoming and, and humble and unassuming culture is, it's invaluable. 
because it makes you feel like you're at home. You can go out and have fun. On Friday night, I went to a heavy metal show at a bar downtown in La Paz. And um, many of the viewers won't understand the next references, but that's okay. Um, they were playing Metallica, System of a Down. They were playing Megadeth. They were playing these great, really hard music. And it was so wonderful for me because I could relate to the music of my youth. And, you went you to know, La Lupita? It was at the Jack Bar. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, but in between the songs, the whole band spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible for me to be there and be into the music and then realize, you know, these guys are singing these incredible pieces of music phonetically. You know? They sound like the singer. Um, but when you have a conversation with them, you know, we only had a handful of words in common because my Spanish is progressing, but it's not <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> there's great beach bars, there's, uh, there's great beach bars, there's, there's, uh, they don't have the same kind of all-inclusive resorts that you'll find in Cabo, but there's uh, Costa Baja and Puerto mm -hmm. Cortez, there's different marinas, uh, there's a place like El Terraza Grill, right here where we are right now, where there's a beautiful swimming pool and a bar. We about, yeah, have about restaurants and different kind of food here. It's every time more selection and more options. You have the opportunity to party, but you're not getting beat over the head with it every day. What well, happened also is that many things that you have been mentioned for me are normal. Right. So probably yeah. I, I'm like, oh, that's true, it's true. But for me, it's not like the big thing because for me it's something normal. It's, I'm from here. <laughs> so just say it. I'm like, oh, they well, see uh, this and this. Oh my God, that's true. In my experience, it is not normal to be in many places that are much more vacation mm -hmm. spots in Mexico and have someone be so proud of their knowledge of the Sea of Cortez to be enthusiastic about talking about what's special about the ocean here and then not try to sell you a tour, you know? Right. So the, the, there's a genuine pride uh -huh. in yeah. living here that, uh, that isn't all wrapped up in selling an excursion or a tour out to the island or something. And all those tours yeah. are available here mm -hmm. and they're wonderful. Um, but it's nice to know that the locals are, are proud of La Paz, proud to be from La Paz, proud of everything La Paz has to offer. Yeah, you will not see like in the big, uh, in the cities where there is a lot of tourists that they want to sell you everything in every corner, you don't see that here. No, you don't. That doesn't happen. So you request for things and they help you and they tell you where to find them, but they are not after you. Like, five dollars meal this this and this come these places yeah. that doesn't happen here and la paz is very different from many other places you may visit in mexico in that tourism is not the primary industry the primary industry here is government and what that means is you're not going to find a lot of all-inclusive resorts um, you're not going to find a lot of people uh, you know really promoting their own businesses everywhere you're, you're not going to find a lot of people seeing you as a target financially when you visit this part of Mexico. It's, uh, La Paz is rich with Mexican Baja culture. The food is extraordinary. The people are incredibly hospitable. Um, and uh, if, if you'll indulge me, I think the day that I decided that's it, I'm never leaving, is I got a flat tire. And where, where I was in Miami, the volume on the I-95 highway is probably 10,000 cars every 15 minutes. And if I got a flat on the I-95, I could have been there for eight hours. No, no one would have pulled over. You would have, have had to call a service. Here I got a flat tire and I, I guess the, one of the lug nuts was a little bit stiff. Four guys pulled over immediately. Uh, we were laughing by the end. They practically pushed me out of the way, changed the tire. One of them followed me to the service station. And I think it was at that moment I realized this is really the way life should be. People helping each other. I've never felt more welcomed in a place than I've felt in La Paz. And I, I love it here. And, and I'm never leaving. <laughs> That's true. People from La Paz is like that. Actually, it's very common that when you stop in the, in the streets, uh, when you went across the street, they give you the pass. I mean, in other cities, they never do that kind of thing. So yeah. it's something very particular from here has been growing a lot, but we're still having in here in La Paz the, 
more the family thing. So even if, if it's growing, you will not see like the big trees or the foreigners all around. So we're still being at like a, a family city where you can know everybody. And also about what you say about the people, it's very easy that you just walk in the street, you are lost or you, want, or you need some information and you can ask anybody and everybody will help you and they will ask you where you're going, what do you, what do you need. So they will give you even extra information, advice, so it's very easy about it. People from here are very friendly.